Hi, let's talk about performance tuning in SSIS. So this is a one of the important task or it is one of the important uh, area for all the SSIS developers. Maybe in any time a SSIS developer can face how to improve. He may think about how to improve the performance of SSIS packages. So what are all the uh, precautions or what are all the best practices I need to take it to improve the current SSIS package performance. So see uh, first of all, so before going to improve the performance of SSIS package. So if you have any package which is running very slowly, then first of all you need to identify the where exactly it is taking long time means what are all the bottlenecks. What are all the bottlenecks which are in your package? So that bottlenecks are at many levels. That bottlenecks are at the many levels. So first bottleneck is at the package level. <coughs> Second is at the source level. Maybe at the destination level. Maybe at the data flow task level. Maybe at the transformation level or at the system level. So when I say data flow task level, it covers source, destination and transformation indirectly. Like, <clears throat> see, we need to identify where exactly it is taking long time or where is the issue exactly. What is the situation it is taking long time. See, to identify that place, so in the SSIS, SQL Server Data Tools are Business Intelligence Development Studio, we have a progress tab. So there you can clearly see where exactly it is taking a long time. So based on that analysis, you can concentrate more on the particular level rather than concentrating on the entire package. See, if you want to identify the bottleneck at the production, so it, it may be a little tricky part, but if you are enabled a logging on your package, then you can easily identify that. So if you are at the development system or if you have a SSDT or bits in your machine, you can easily identify where exactly the bottleneck is, where exactly it is taking long time. <coughs> First, see there are many, <coughs> there are many ways you can improve it. So as per my knowledge, so I'm going to give you some points. So there may be a different points to improve it. There may be a different scenario you might have faced to improve them to handle it. First, so first what I want to tell you is first let's enable a checkpoint. So see this enabling checkpoint may not be suitable for all the packages. So it again it belongs to a particular scenario. So let's implement a checkpoints to have a better resetability of components in the package. So I'm repeating. So enabling checkpoints may not be suitable in all the packages and all the scenarios it's suitable to a specific scenarios only so during that scenarios let's enable the checkpoints second one disable the event handlers see so there are some scenarios where we might need event handlers compulsory so let's keep that compulsory event handlers but so if you are by by any chance or by mistake if you enable the event handlers for unnecessarily so let's disable that so directly those event handlers are going to decrease the package performance so wherever you have unnecessary event handlers let's disable it in the package so but minimum events we might require let's keep it that because so there might be package failure or there might be something comes in the future we might need that minimum events next so let's Increase the maximum concurrent executables. Let's increase the maximum concurrent executables. It means that so you are going to execute number of tasks in a parallel. It, it directly indicates that you are increasing the performance. So when multiple tasks are when multiple independent tasks are running parallelly, it means that it is going to execute the Parallelly, it is going to execute in the parallel way and it is going to increase the 
package performance again you need to have a system resources to run multiple tasks or multiple stuff in a parallel way rather than the series manner <coughs> next one so maximum error count so again it again it belongs to a specific scenario so there are by default maximum error count is going to be one so if you want to go with a, a one error if you want to fail the package you can go with it but if you have a scenario you want to go with a some two or three or something let's set that particular value to that particular value and wait for it so then package is going to run till that particular count and it's going to be fail so these are at the package tuning tips so there might be different again belongs to a scenario specific one so let us say so there is a requirement so i am i am loading a data from um, sql server uh, source to the sql server destination so during that scenario so rather than using multiple transformations let us say aggregate transformations or let us say uh, some other transformations derived column or data conversion transformations rather than using the transformations let's handle everything in the sql server procedures so that also indirectly increases the package performance i'm repeating so when you are reading or loading the data from sql server to again destination is also a sql server so that time better to use a sql server objects rather than using veridb source veridb destination or some other transformations again so <clears throat> better to use a transformations like let's segregate between a synchronous and a synchronous transformations so that also will degrade the package performance i'm repeating better to segregate the between synchronous transformations and asynchronous transformations so that also will decrease the package performance and next one is at the so please try to reduce as transformations as possible again it purely depends on the the scenario like if, let us there is a scenario so you are loading data from directly from a flat file to a sql server so if you are handling through a staging table then better to use again a, a, a load sql uh, flat file to the staging table sql server staging table go with a validb source and validb a destination so once the data is loaded into a staging table then from staging to uh, uh, direct uh, final table better to go with a sql server objects than going with a uh, ssis controls like a source destination or transformation like again so when you are loading a data from source to a destination better to go with a incremental load every time rather than going with a full load better to go with a incremental load so when i say incremental load so you are going to load only specific delta records let us say so uh, when my ssis package is going to run daily so when i go with a delta it may run in a minute but when i go with a full load it may take 10 minutes to take all the records and to process that so that is the reason why so i'm asking you to go with an incremental load so when the data volume is very very slow let us say master data it might be 10 records it might be a five records so that time you can go with them you can directly go with them so full load that does not make any much difference in the performance so first of all next so these these are all the stuff so you need to handle while developing a designing a package next so last at last in detail one you need to understand what is my data flow performance see the data flow performance need to be understand by identifying a bottleneck so you have a data flow task under that you have around some 10 ssis objects like a source destination and in the middle i have some couple of transformations lookup transformation and uh, so derived data uh, derived data conversion or aggregate or something so there first of all you need to identify which transformation is taking more time so based on the transformation means you need to identify a bottleneck where exactly it is taking more time so once you identify that so then you go and go for a fix and so there are some scenarios or there are some developers they will pull 
all the columns from a table even though you don't need those columns in your destination so let's reduce the columns reduce the number of columns let's say you need only three columns let's pull only three columns instead of 10 columns so that also increases your ssis package performance so and it, it increases the package performance and it, it it reduces the system resources as well so i mean finally so whatever the columns you need let's pull only those columns and so whatever the rows you need let's pull only those rows i mean incremental rows only so whatever the rows which are changed yesterday as a part of our transactional db let's pull only those rows rather than pulling full load next so let's column width as well so there are some scenarios so the people might have declared the column with a var care of 100 so even though the value exact value is of 4 or 5 so let's handle that also next so use the past parsing mode for plot file sources then going for other stuff next even in the transformations also so you need to identify a bottlenecks and let's go with that way next so there are like we already talked about uh, asynchronous and synchronous transformations or blocking or non-blocking transformations so let's handle that also next so rather than going for uh, aggregate or transformations let's handle in the sql objects so these are all the precautions you need to take care so while designing the ssis package so that's it thank you for watching if you like our videos please subscribe and uh, comment in the comments section thank you again please watch our videos and share with your friends